Well, hello there. Welcome back to the channel. My name is James and here at 20th and 21st Movies, we are about all things cinema. Well, I am excited today to share with you my thoughts on this edition from the Criterion Collection of High Sierra. This comes in at spine number 1099 in the Criterion Collection. It's the recent Blu-ray release that came out in October. And I actually picked this up as part of the Criterion.com flash sale, the 24 hour flash sale that they had in October. This one comes in at spine number 1099. It comes in right before spine number 1100, The Incredible Shrinking Man, which I also picked up in my Criterion uh, flash sale haul from last month. So this is a film that I've recently watched. It stars Ida Lupino and Humphrey Bogart. It's from 1941 and it was directed by Raoul Walsh. And this is Raoul Walsh's first entry in the Criterion Collection, his first film in the Criterion Collection. And you'll note here that of course, Ida Lupino does get top billing in this film over Humphrey Bogart. And that's because at the time that this film came out, Humphrey Bogart had been in a few films. So this is not his first film. He had been in films before, but he had not yet established himself as, you know, one of the go-to leading men in Hollywood. This was the film that propelled him to that status, High Sierra. It came out in 1941, came out the year before another slightly famous film that starred Humphrey Bogart came out, 1942's Casablanca, starring Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. That was, of course, one of the greatest films of all time, highly regarded as one of the best films ever made. And this film came out the year before that film. So this film, High Sierra, really propelled Humphrey Bogart to that top billing leading man status that we all know him as today. And this is really just a fascinating, fascinating film that I really enjoyed. I saw it for the first time with this Criterion Collection edition release. And this is a film that is based on the novel from W.R. Burnett. So novelist W.R. Burnett wrote the novel that this film is based on. Burnett also wrote the novel uh, Asphalt Jungle, which is the basis for the film Asphalt Jungle that came out, I think, in 1960, sometime around that time frame. And W.R. Burnett wrote the novel for Asphalt Jungle. Asphalt Jungle is also in the Criterion Collection, and I highly recommend picking that one up if you're thinking about titles to pick up for the Barnes & Noble sale. Asphalt Jungle is one that you might want to consider picking up. That's a really good one. But this one here is also another pretty good one, High Sierra. I really enjoyed this film. This film is basically about, even though Humphrey Bogart gets second billing here, this film really does center around his character, Roy Earl. So Roy Earl is a man in Indiana just released from prison. And almost as soon as he gets out of prison, he's being hired again for another big time job out in California in the Sierra Nevada mountains to do one last heist. So he leaves, gets in his car, heads out west, leaves Indiana to head west to California to meet up with this gangster crew that he's gonna do this big job with. Of course, Ida Lupino, Ida Lupino plays Marie. She is part of this gang that he's gonna connect with. So you see the interaction between Roy Earl and the other members of the gang. You see his interactions, of course, with Ida Lupino's Marie. And there's another character in this film that plays a pretty big role and, and kind of creates the love triangle between Humphrey Bogart's Roy Earl, Ida Lupino's Marie, and that is the character Velma, played by Joan Leslie in this film. So you have Joan Leslie's Velma, Ida Lupino's Marie, and Humphrey Bogart's Roy Earl in a love triangle, if you will. Roy is in love with this young lady, Velma, who has an issue with her foot, a club foot. She gets ends up getting surgery on that to get that corrected. Humphrey Bogart's character has feelings for her and wants to marry her. Of course, that love isn't returned, and he also begins to have feelings for Marie, Ida Lupino's character. So you have a bit of a love triangle going on there between Roy, Marie, and Velma. And then you also have the interactions between Roy and the other members of the gang, members of Velma's family, that really make up part of the narrative of this film. But essentially this film is all about Roy Earl. So part of what I love about this film is how it beautifully shows the story of Roy Earl going to California, doing this last job, this last heist, it's basically an ill-fated heist. You can kind of guess where things are gonna go with this film. You kind of have an idea of what Roy Earl's destiny is in this film early on. 
but it's just so fascinating seeing this character played out on the screen, seeing this earlier role from Humphrey Bogart as he becomes the leading man that we would know him to be in future films. It's really fascinating to see his development as an actor and how wonderfully he played the character of Roy Earl in this film. Just absolute brilliant acting from Humphrey Bogart. I thought that Ida Lupino did a nice job as Marie in this film. I think every actor played a really important part in this film and I think every supporting character really did a nice job supporting the narrative of this film and really building this world that Roy Earl was inhabiting during this time in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. So the acting in this film, High Sierra, is top notch, starting with Humphrey Bogart, Ida Lupino, Joan Leslie playing the lead characters in this film to all the supporting characters who played a role in this film. Of course, you've got members of Velma's family. You have Alan Curtis you, who played in this film. Of course, you have Arthur Kennedy who played Red, a very important role in this film. You had Henry Hall who played Doc Barton who played a very nice role in this film. Of course, Henry Travers played Pa, the father of Velma in this film. Just Tremendous, tremendous acting in this film all the way around. Elizabeth Risden played Ma in this film, who played the mother of uh, Velma. And then there was a character named Algeron, played by Willie Best, which also has a historically important role in this film. Willie Best played the character of Algernon, who was a black porter or servant in this film basically playing a stereotypical role that was pretty common that black actors were generally relegated to at that time. And one of the special features on this disc really speaks to the history of that and speaks really to the career of Willie Best and the history of the use of black actors during this time, which is part of the history of Hollywood, just sort of understanding just where film has evolved over time Understanding some of that history, I think, is really important. So Willie Best uh, stars in this film as well. But overall, the cast of this movie, High Sierra, just absolutely fantastic. And in addition to the cast, I think one of the things I really loved about this film, in addition to the great acting from Bogart and Lupino and, and all of them, I think one of the best characters of this film was the Sierra Nevada mountains themselves. I mean, this is taking place in California, in the High Sierra Nevada mountains. Of course, you've got Mount Whitney, the tallest elevation peak in the United States, is prominently featured in the backdrop, in the, the uh, location of this film. This film was shot on location, so this is not shot on sets or a back lot in Hollywood. This was actually shot on location in this mountainous region of California. And you see Humphrey Bogart's character and other characters driving in cars up and through the mountainous hills and terrain. You just see this beautiful, beautiful backdrop location of the High Sierra Mountains of California. And it's just absolutely breathtaking and beautiful. And I think it was a fantastic decision on the part of Raul Walsh and this production team to do this on location shooting. I would imagine some of the scenes are probably shot on sets somewhere. I haven't done the full research to know where everything was shot, but a lot of this shooting was done on location and they're actually in these mountains and you get to see that and really get to appreciate the landscape and the topography that they were in. So I really appreciated that about this film. I thought the atmosphere and the landscapes and the, and the topography was one of the principal characters of this film and part of why I enjoyed High Sierra so much in addition to the great acting and the story itself. So as a film, High Sierra comes highly recommended. I think Bogart's acting really carries this film. His character, Roy Earl, is truly the central figure of this film. He is really the star of this film. Of course, Ida Lupino got top billing. She was a more popular actor at the time, but truly this film and this story is about the story of Roy Earl and Humphrey Bogart played that character absolutely brilliantly. I think the location is absolutely brilliant with this backdrop of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Just a beautiful location, great story, great acting. All around, this is definitely highly recommended as a film. As far as the audio and the video, you get here a new 4K digital restoration with an uncompressed monaural soundtrack. And I think this restoration looks very nice. This is a black and white film, and I think the photography looks excellent 
with this 4K digital restoration. And I believe if I read in here in the included fold out, they talk about the restoration. It wasn't from the original camera negative. So it was uh, basically this picture was originally released at 100 minutes in 1940 and cut down to 95 minutes for a reissue in 1948. And it says here, no original camera negative survives for either version. So what they did is they use a 35 millimeter nitrate fine grain master positive that was stored at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. So they used the best elements that they had available for the restoration. Of course, having the original camera negative or the OCN is ideal for any 2K or 4K restoration. When that's not available, which is usually the case for a lot of these older films, this is an 80 year old film from 1941, so highly unlikely that the OCN would be available. And even if it was, might not be in the best condition for use. So that was the case here. So you use the best elements available and I think the results that they got for this film are excellent. The landscapes look beautiful. You get really nice detail in a lot of the shots. There are some shots that do come across a bit soft. You do have a nice layer of grain throughout the picture, but I think overall the, the image quality is very strong for this 4K digital restoration of this film, High Sierra. Just a beautiful black and white film that is beautifully realized in this 4K restoration. And it really gives you an appreciation for not only the, the detail in the characters and their faces and then in the clothing and the stitching and the clothing and the indoor and, and exterior locations, but also just getting an appreciation for just the nature and the topography and the landscape of this beautiful on location footage that they were able to get. I think it all comes across beautifully in this 4K restoration. The sound is also very nice. You get an uncompressed monaural soundtrack and this film sounds just fine. So from an overall AV perspective, both video and audio, High Sierra is a winner from the Criterion Collection and definitely gets double thumbs up. As far as the supplements, that is really where this edition from Criterion really shines. In addition to the movie being great, the audio and video coming across very well, the supplements are absolutely fantastic for this edition from the Criterion Collection. So there's a couple of things that you'll really wanna note here. First of all, there's two discs that appear in this edition from Criterion. Of course, disc one is in the player and you can see the menus up here, but there's a second disc that's included in here, disc two for High Sierra. And on this second disc is a second film called Colorado Territory. This is a 1949 film which basically uses the same story as High Sierra and it stars Joel McRae. So you get another film in here. Now this film, Colorado Territory, is not fully restored and you will see that when you pop it in, you watch it. You'll see some of the imperfections that are still there, but it is included in this disc number two. So definitely check that out. So that is one of the big supplements on this release is the inclusion of another film. And I always love when they include another film on a, on a release like this. Colorado Territory was also directed by Raul Walsh and it was basically a Western remake of High Sierra. You also get a new conversation on Walsh between film programmer Dave Kerr and critic Farron Smith Neen, which is really, really good. You also get True Adventures of Raul Walsh, a 2019 documentary by Marilyn Ann Moss. You get Curtains for Roy Earl, which is a featurette on the making of High Sierra. And that really talks a lot about, you know, gangster films and the history of gangster films and, you know, how they were inspired by folks like Bonnie and Clyde and John Dillinger and different folks. And so that's a really nice feature that talks about that history. And then you have Bogart, here's looking at you kid which is a 1997 documentary, uh, which uh, includes his son, Stephen Bogart, who was very young at the time that his father passed away. I think he was only eight years old, but that's a really nice feature to listen to. And then one of the best features on here that I really appreciated was an interview or a discussion with film and media historian Miriam Petty about actor Willie Best. So, Actor Willie Best uh, played the character Algernon in this film. 
He was basically, he's a black actor who played in a stereotypical role that a lot of black actors were relegated to play during this time in Hollywood history, playing either a porter or a janitor or some type of a low level service type job. And Willie Best was basically playing this role, providing comic relief, and just playing that stereotypical role that a lot of actors uh, from that time were relegated to play in. So Miriam Petty does a really nice job of talking about Willie Best's career and talking about that history in Hollywood. And I really did appreciate that. And also she referred to Willie Best often being considered interchangeable with actors, other black actors like Stephen Fetchett at the time. So that's a really nice discussion with Miriam Petty that I really appreciate it being on here. So I think Miriam Petty did a really nice job with her discussion. That's a really nice piece of history that is included in this edition from Criterion. And it's really one of the things that I really appreciate about Criterion and editions like this is you not only get to watch the film and enjoy the film, but you also gain an appreciation for the historical context that surrounds the film. And I think that's really valuable to understand and really great for me to understand as I watch these films. So you're not just watching the film and, oh, that's a really great movie, but you're also understanding how does this movie fit in film history? What are the things that were going on during that time in the 1930s and 1940s and how this film was being influenced and what you know went into the making of the film? So I really appreciate that. Uh, aspect of the supplements that are included in many of these Criterion releases. You also get a new video essay featuring excerpts from the 1976 American Film Institute interview with novelist and screenwriter W.R. Burnett. He's the novelist who wrote the book that this movie is based on. And then you also get one of those radio adaptations of, of High Sierra from 1944. And this particular radio adaptation includes Humphrey Bogart and Ida Lupino doing the voices for that adaptation. So that's very nice. And then of course, on the inside of here, on the inside of the actual case itself, you get a very nice essay from Imogen Sarah Smith, who does always does a fantastic job on, on all of her writings for the Criterion Collection. This is called Crashing Out from Imogen Sarah Smith. It's an excellent essay. You get some nice pictures of both Bogart and Lupino. You also have a little picture of the dog here who plays a nice role in the film. I can definitely appreciate that having recently gotten a German Shepherd puppy. So this is really nice with the booklet, nice essay from Imogen Sarah Smith. Of course, on the inside you have disc number two, but if I take out the second disc and show you the contents and show you the contents of the inside, you see this little um, art on the inside, which is very nice. There on this side of it, you see the outside of the case. So overall, very nice packaging from the Criterion Collection. And I think the supplemental package is absolutely phenomenal. That is one of the best parts of this overall package from the Criterion Collection is the supplements are absolutely top notch. They give you a great context in the history of this film from a gangster film standpoint, gives you some history on the use of black actors during that time, including Willie Best, and just gives you some more information about Humphrey Bogart and his history, and just really helps you fill in you know, your understanding of High Sierra and, and just gives you a greater appreciation for the movie. So I think the supplements are absolutely outstanding for this release and part of what makes this release highly recommended from me. So overall, I definitely recommend this edition from Criterion. If you're thinking about what are some good additions to pick up for this November Barnes and Noble Criterion Collection sale, this 50% off sale, add this one to your list. If you have any interest in early Hollywood, golden age of Hollywood, 1930s, 1940s, definitely include High Sierra in your list for this November Barnes & Noble sale. It is an excellent addition. You get two discs, you get this film High Sierra with some excellent supplements, and you also get the remake Colorado Territory from 1949 starring Joel McRae, which I always love Joel McRae in most of the movies that he's played in. 
That is an excellent one to watch as well. It's not restored like High Sierra, but you do get the movie. Get some excellent supplements on this disc. A nice essay from Imogen Sarah Smith included in here. And overall, just a fantastic presentation. So this one comes highly, highly recommended. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think about this film? If you've seen High Sierra, let me know what you think about this film. Let me know what you think about Humphrey Bogart as an actor. And let me know what your favorite Humphrey Bogart film is. Is it High Sierra? Is it a film like Casablanca? Or could it be a film like In a Lonely Place? Let me know that in the comments below what your favorite Humphrey Bogart film is. And also let me know what titles you're looking to pick up in this Barnes & Noble Criterion Collection sale. The sale is in full swing. Let me know what titles you're most excited about picking up for this Barnes & Noble sale. So with that, thanks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you next time at the movies. Peace.